Well, uh, hello, good afternoon, and uh, uh, we had a, have uh, we're a very frank and open discussion at the uh, council. It was not our preference to have an open meeting or a pin briefing, because it's a matter that uh, can institute an internal domestic uh, matter. But I just want to underline that my country, Ethiopia, is undergoing a significant transformation that indeed requires uh, uh, delicate and context-driven uh, handling of complex domestic challenges. We are discussing about a country of 110 million people with over 18 nations and nationalities, so ethnic groups. There's always a delicate balance. So uh, we ask the council to be considerate of this political dynamics that, if not properly handled, will push us to the deep river and to the abyss of point of no return. So uh, we also highlight uh, in our meeting that the government of Ethiopia has successfully conducted national election in which millions of Ethiopians voted for peace and stability. We're quite stunned and surprised that millions came out and casted their vote. The task of the next government, once formed, is to ensure lasting peace and stability throughout the country. As you heard, on June 28, the government declared a unilateral ceasefire to create a conducive environment for humanitarian oppression and pave the way for an inclusive dialogue of all Ethiopians. We also urge members of the council to understand the magnitude of the challenge we face and also recognize the bold and difficult decision we took to cease the law enforcement operation. We remain ready and committed to work with all partners to scale up humanitarian assistance, ensure accountability for alleged crimes, and, and, and enable the people of Tigray to partake in the agricultural planting season. There if, uh, go ahead, James. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, thank you, Ambassador. Good to see you again. I'm afraid you're probably not going to like my question. You're a long-serving diplomat, very respected. You were on the Security Council just three years ago. Do you not feel uncomfortable representing a government that, with its Eritrean allies, has been accused of carrying out executions, massacres, rape, and hindering the delivery of humanitarian aid? Well, uh, James, uh, I completely disagree with the way the question is constructed. Because my government responded to the attack perpetrated by the TPLF operators in the middle of the night. Over 600 officers were brutally murdered in their camps. Would there be any world government that would allow to let it go, such kind of atrocities. So that indeed started the whole yeah, conflict. Along with the trends. Uh, as in any conflict, there are excesses. It's not only, you know, in, in, in the engagement, of course, there were crimes committed by different armed groups. Those, those, who are, those, those well? who are responsible for committing crimes of the government time and again as certain will be made responsible. There won't be any impunity whatsoever. So uh, uh, we are fully engaged. An investigation has to be taken. Yes, indeed, I have been serving here at the United Nations for many years. I have heard all the dooms and glooms of poor nations being brought here at the council and abashed for what they did and for what they didn't do or t 
taught about it. But as a responsible nation state, as an old country in the world, I tell you, we have the full responsibility and accountability for whatever happened in Tigray. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. The Under Secretary General for Political Affairs, uh, Rosemary DiCarlo, warned today of the possibility of more conflict in Western Tigray, which is still occupied by forces from neighboring Amhara, which were fighting alongside your army. Um, what can you do to um, ensure that the Amhara re forces return to Amhara and leave Western Tigray? Well, uh, the Amhara believes, the Amhara people believe that they are in their rightful ancestral land. This war forcibly incorporated in 1992 without any due process or any constitutional arrangement. I came from that part of uh, the country, uh, from my mother's side. A community that speaks fluent Amharic and fluent Tigrinyan. I thought back then this would be a small chromosomes of the Ethiopian society that believes in diversity, that can speak many languages, and yet live peacefully together. This was, so there's, there is a process that is going on right now. There is no any intention to take over land, but there's, the government has the, uh, an institution that has been put in place. This is called Regional Border Commission. Uh, so it is going to be, you know, the case will be submitted to that board, and then, of course, a decision will be made. That could be probably after uh, the new government is so, in place. So does that mean that um, the Ethiopian government supports the Amhara forces remaining in Western Tigray until that commission makes a decision? Well, uh, I think uh, that is, that is in, in fact, a matter of fact. Uh, Ambassador, it's Pamela Falk from Pamela. CBS News. Are you at all horrified by the kinds of attacks that have taken place? You mentioned the army barracks attack that began this crisis. That's military to military. We're talking about mass rape. We're talking about young boys being recruited, and we're talking about forced famine. Are you, what is your reaction to the crimes that have occurred? Well, uh, whoever committed a crime should be accountable. Uh, from the uh, um, Ethiopian government side, from the rebels, and as I said earlier, there should not be impunity at all. Because we are, we are taught to go away with the crimes anyone has committed in the past. That was the order that we have seen over the last 30 years during the, uh, when TPLF was uh, in power. So there is a determination and a commitment from the government that everybody has to be accountable. We have seen some horrendous crimes. I'm not going to hear and uh, uh, just simply uh, you know, evade those, those questions. Because there are so many unsolved griefs and closed the mornings. For us, in order to heal, we have to come together and commit ourselves, and then through national dialogue, solve our national wounds. Thank you, Ambassador. Michelle Hi. Nichols Michelle. from Reuters. Um, we heard from the UN today that the number of people in famine has risen now from 350,000 to 400,000. Could we get your response to that, given that the government disputed the previous figures of 350,000? And the US ambassador said that 
if there's a denial, she sort of insinuated that if some of these accusations that have been made about the destruction of the bridge, the looting of aid agencies, that that is not a humanitarian ceasefire, it would be more of a siege. And if you could respond to that. Well, that's, that's uh, honestly, that's, uh, that's unhelpful because there's a commitment from the government and particularly the leadership, they make that decision at the heavy political risks because uh, the determination was to lead, to save lives in Tigray and the vicinity of the Amara state as well. So uh, calling it creating a siege is really, uh, is, uh, is completely unacceptable because it, it, it undercuts and undermines the efforts, particularly the peace-loving people have indeed worked for that for quite a number of months. So uh, not recognizing that bold move kind of insinuates that we are not in the same chapter, in the same uh, line. So uh, that's indeed, I heard it clear and loud. But uh, you know, through our bilateral engagement, you can explain that the purpose is not to make a siege; it is to save lives. The issue was that there wasn't any access. We say that this has to be a cease of uh, you know law enforcement operation, believing that that will create you know uh, an opportunity so that humanitarian assistance can easily flow unimpeded to the most needy people. And does the Ethiopian government agree that some 400,000 people are currently suffering from famine? Well, uh, unless and otherwise we reach, you know, uh, there is a, an Ethiopian saying, <laughs> maybe, you, are, you know, uh, if a farmer miss one rainy season months, usually it's June, he or she will not recover through seven consecutive Junes or rainy seasons. When they miss, it will be very difficult. So the decision was, we don't want our farmers to, to miss this month. If they do, there will be uh, a lot of calamity will descend upon us. So the decision was, it's not about the numbers. You know, uh, I understand that the World Food Program, Save the Children, UNICEF, and a number of others have taken the responsibility in distributing even nutrition foods to the people on the, on the ground. So uh, we have to move fast. And our disaster coordination commission is right on the ground. But Unfortunately, the TPLF people, it is reported that they have started even assassinating some of the uh, aid workers uh, whom they believe that they are working in close, they have been working in close collaboration with the Ethiopian government or with the interim administration of uh, Tigray. You know, uh, in the council, they were mentioning about uh, electricity uh, and also uh, telecommunication lines. We are working hard to restore that, but we have to be very careful because 30 electrical engineers and telecom engineers have been murdered by the VLF in maintaining those power lines. So the situation is very complex. It's not only always bashing and shaming the government, but the TPLF, as irresponsible as they are from day one, they have continued in uh, attacking even people uh, you know, uh, on the field, trying to, day and night, you know, to give services to our people. Thank you very much. Just um, one I last question. Let me ask you one question because the council, it seems the council will discuss the dam issue with Egypt and Sudan. So are you still planning to start filling the dam this month? Uh, and uh, what's your message to Sudan and Egypt on this uh, issue? And where is diplomacy now? How can you describe the diplomatic uh, yes. track? Yes, there's, uh, there is uh, an AU, African Union led process, uh, still alive and working. 
Ethiopia puts, and including, of course, the hub, the, uh, uh, Egypt and Sudan, put our trust on that uh, process. And uh, we don't believe any transboundary resource should be seen at the council. I don't, we don't think it's the purview of the council and the mandate of the council. It's, it's, it's completely uh, from the mandate of the council. So uh, we stick to the AU-led process. We are committed to that. There are some technical and legal issues. It shouldn't be politicized. It shouldn't be internationalized. I understand there are some countries uh, who want to bring the issue to the Security Council, but this is another way how to solve transboundary problems. If we're going to see this issue today, how many rivers, transboundary rivers, the world it has? 250. So you guys are going to be very busy, you know, <laughs> asking questions about you know uh, transboundary resources as a source of conflict. That's completely unacceptable. You will start filling it. Oh, uh, you know, uh, we can, we can talk about that next week when the uh, the agenda will be uh, tabled. What uh, I can tell you is that we are closely working with the African Union. There are also observers that have been very much helpful over the years, and we put our trust and confidence in the AU peace, I mean, in AU lead process. Thank you very much. One last question on Tigray. Have all the Eritreans left? The, the latest report I have is that Eritreans have left. They've left, they've yeah. gone, they've gone home. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you.